Le 6 décembre 1989, j'étais à Montréal, au cégep, juste en bas de la côte de l'École polytechnique. Je ne peux pas vous dire ce que j'ai étudié ce jour-là, mais je n'oublierai jamais le moment où j'ai entendu les premiers reportages d'une tuerie à l'École polytechnique. Au début, j'étais complètement sous le choc. Je ne pouvais pas croire ce que j'entendais. Du haut de mes 17 ans, je ne pouvais pas comprendre qu'un tel geste de violence envers les femmes ait pu se produire dans un pays comme le nôtre, dans une société comme la nôtre. Every Canadian has their version of this story. Every one of us remembers the day when we realized that even in Canada, a man with a gun could irrevocably alter our lives for the worse. We remember how our sense of safety was shaken, how our worldview was changed. École Polytechnique, Mayerthorpe, Dawson College, Moncton, La Loche, La Grande Mosquée de Québec, The Danforth, Fredericton, and Cumberland, Colchester, and Hants counties, Nova Scotia. These tragedies reverberate still. They shape our identity. They stain our conscience. They make adults out of children. And the heartbreaking truth is they're happening more often than they once did. With each passing year, more families are ripped apart by tragedy. More parents are struggling to explain the inexplicable to their kids. And more teenagers are growing up in a world where gun violence is normalized. It needs to stop. Last week, 22 Canadians were killed in the deadliest rampage in our country's history. They were nurses and teachers, correctional officers and RCMP officers. They were someone's child, someone's best friend, someone's partner. Their families deserve more than thoughts and prayers. Canadians deserve more than thoughts and prayers. Lors des dernières élections, nous nous sommes engagés à interdire les armes d'assaut de type militaire et à mettre en place un programme de rachat. Nous avons annoncé notre intention de travailler avec les gouvernements des provinces et des territoires pour permettre aux municipalités d'interdire les armes de poing. Nous, nous avons aussi promis de prendre d'autres mesures pour sauver des vies. En octobre, les Canadiens ont confié à leurs élus un mandat clair, resserrer le contrôle des armes à feu au Canada. Et aujourd'hui, on tient parole. Today, we are closing the market for military grade assault weapons in Canada. We are banning 1,500 models and variants of these firearms by way of regulations. These weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time. There is no use and no place for such weapons in Canada. For many families, including many Indigenous people, firearms are part of traditions passed down through generations, and the vast majority of gun owners use them safely, responsibly, and in accordance with the law, whether it be for work, sport shooting, for collecting, or for hunting. But you don't need an AR-15 to bring down a deer. So, effective immediately, it is no longer permitted to buy, sell, transport, import, or use military-grade assault weapons in this country. To protect law-abiding gun owners from criminal liability until they can take steps to comply with this new law, there will be a two-year amnesty period, and we will legislate fair compensation. Now, I want to take a moment to recognize the leadership of Minister Blair on this file. Tackling gun violence has been a personal and professional priority of his 
for decades. He's done incredible work to make this policy a reality, and we are here today thanks to his leadership and to the leadership of people like him. Merci, Bill. Aujourd'hui, nous fermons le marché des armes d'assaut de type militaire au Canada. Nous interdisons 1500 modèles et variantes de ce type d'armes à feu par voie réglementaire. Ces armes n'ont été conçues qu'à une seule et unique fin, tuer le plus grand nombre de personnes le plus rapidement possible. Elles n'ont aucune utilité et elles n'ont pas leur place au Canada. À travers le pays, beaucoup de gens utilisent des armes à feu de façon légale et responsable, que ce soit pour travailler ou pour chasser. Mais vous n'avez pas besoin d'un AR-15 pour abattre un cerf. <coughs> Donc, à partir de maintenant, il n'est plus permis de vendre, d'acheter, de transporter, d'importer ou d'utiliser des armes d'assaut de type militaire au Canada. Pour protéger les propriétaires d'armes à feu respectueux des lois de toute responsabilité criminelle, une période d'amnistie de deux ans sera établie pour qu'ils puissent se conformer à cette nouvelle réglementation et nous avons l'intention de présenter un projet de loi bientôt pour assurer une compensation juste. 30 years from now, an entire generation of Canadians will remember exactly where they were on Sunday, April 18th, 2020. They will remember how their sense of safety was shaken, how their outlook on the world was forever changed. They will remember the day that they lost some of their innocence. This chapter in our history cannot be rewritten, but what happens next is up to us. We can stick to thoughts and prayers alone, or we can unite as a country and put an end to this. We can decide together that enough is enough. Today's announcement builds on the things we did during our first term. It's the next step. And there is more work ahead to implement this and pass legislation to further strengthen our laws. I've already spoken with the other parliamentary leaders, and I know that we will be able to work together and do even more to keep Canadians safe. Every single Canadian wants to see less gun violence and safer communities. So today, we take another big step forward. Merci beaucoup.